Hi everyone, my name's Jen with Slope Garden Center. Welcome to our third Wednesday evening webinar and our second webinar in our Summer Spotlight series. I'm really happy to welcome Akila Forrester from Cooking with Keeks, and she will be sharing how to make a simple, yummy dinner salad. I'm just gonna talk for a few minutes while people are logging on. Um, and wanted to let you know that I do have a poll going on. So if you could pop over and fill out the poll, there's some information that we'd like to gather before the presentation. Um, a little bit more about our summer garden spotlight series. I've been really excited about this. Uh, we're highlighting local artists and business businesses that integrate a uh, part of their garden into their practice. And I think it's a fun way to sort of broaden the garden community and make connections uh, through the garden and highlight local businesses. So I think this has been really fun. We started off with um, garden cocktails a couple weeks ago, and then we're doing the farm's table tonight. Um, and then next week I will have a local beekeeper and then following that a local photographer and then a pastry chef. And honestly, I'm having so much fun booking these classes. Um, I hope you're enjoying them too. So uh, one thing that I did wanna note just about this garden community is that I was able to meet Akila through Instagram, uh, just kind of fun side fact, because I was looking, I really wanted to do a farm to table model. And I posted that and somebody, sort of a mutual friend of ours was like, you need to check her out and, and what she's doing. And so I instantly went to her page and sort of stalked her and really liked what she was doing. And I love that she's growing all these things and that she's making these recipes and creating these dishes that uh, really connect back to the garden. So that's a lot of fun. Um, just uh, a reminder that we are recording this webinar and the recording will be available this Friday on the 9th. It's on our website under the learn tab and then garden videos. So what's nice about the recordings is you can go back and rewind and pause, especially for things like this. You know, if you're, if you're making the recipe, it's helpful to be able to do that. Um, and then What's also under that same learn tab and garden videos is all of our past recordings. So, you know, there's a ton of information and it's all free and available online and we've had some amazing classes. So definitely check out that and all of that information. Um, and then let me see, if you have any questions, feel free to feed them into the Q&A. Uh, we will pause here and there for a couple questions during the presentation, but we're going to reserve the majority of the questions towards the end of the presentation. Okay, let's see the poll results really quick. Okay, so 75% of you have joined a slope webinar before, 25% first time, so welcome. Uh, you majority uh, heard about this via email. Um, do you grow your own food? 63%, oh no, 56% said a little bit looking to expand. 33% not yet looking forward to it. So that's exciting. Um, and then yes, 11% grow a lot of their own food. So that's super cool too. Um, what level of gardener do you consider yourself? 67% consider your, the, yourselves um, intermediate gardeners. So that's awesome, 70%. 20% um, are beginner and want to learn as much as possible. I get really, I'm, I get really excited when I see beginner gardeners. It's like baby gardeners. And I'm so happy that you join us and that you're looking to learn as much as possible. Like I said, a ton of information on our website um, and we're here to support and feel free to ask whatever questions. And then, okay, I 
think that's it. Most of you are rewards members. All right, cool. Well, Akila, I'm super excited for your presentation. I'm going to make your recipe along with you. So I've got all of my supplies here. Um, what's fun about this is I actually harvested the lemon and the thyme and the parsley for my own garden tonight. So yes. I love that. And um, I'm just really excited to see what we create. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I am super excited to share this fun seasonal recipe with you guys. Um, and I will start first with just introducing um, some of the tools that you'll need for today's class. Um, so I have two small cookie trays. I know everybody got a list of ingredients and we can go over those as we start to, to use them. But I have two cookie trays. Um, one will be for the croutons and the other will be for the roasted leeks. Um, here I have three mixing bowls. Um, again, one for croutons. Feel free, you know, if you're comfortable, I'm not sure on everybody's kitchen experience, but you can toss the croutons on the sheet trays if you'd like. Um, I like to use the bowls just to keep everything nice and clean and organized. Um, you will need a whisk as well. And then one of these, you know, bowls, um, a salad plate for just finishing everything and getting ready to dig in. Um, I also have here a box grater and we're just gonna need this little um, slicing side here for the shaved radish. Um, I have a garlic crusher as well. And then I have a knife and a cutting board. And that's pretty much it. Um, so, yeah, we get started. Okay, um, so we're gonna start first by doing whatever requires using the oven first. So I've already washed off all of my vegetables, my kale, my leeks. We are gonna have to give these leeks a little bit more wash. As you guys know, some of you who are gardening or familiar with gardening, leeks get dirty all the way through. So we can go ahead and get those um, cut and give them another wash. So when I cut my leeks, I'll take the tops off and you want to cut it to, I would say like the darkest green, if you guys can see that right here. So we'll take the top off and then we're going to take the bottom off as well. And feel free to save any scraps for composting um, or making any kind of stocks, if you will. Um, so we're just gonna take the ends off like so. And then I'm gonna slice it right across the middle. Like so. And then we can go ahead and slice those into half moons and they'll be about a fourth of an inch thick. And we can cut all of the leeks like that. And so my next step after cutting these leeks will be to give them a rinse and make sure that we've gotten all that extra dirt out of there. Um, I did forget to mention those of you who are following with us, um, you'll want to preset your oven to 375. So if you haven't done that already, please just take a moment and do that um, because we will be needing the oven to, um, for our croutons and for our leaks. We can go ahead and put those in a bowl and we can give those a rinse. I suggest washing them a good two or three times to so just run some water, give them a nice shake, and just, you know, look at them thoroughly and make sure we've gotten all the excess dirt off of them.
So I just gave them one room and I'm going to give them one more. Off and just to make sure to give it a good shake to get all that excess water out of there um, because we will be seasoning them with a bit of salt and pepper and oil and we're going to want to make sure that they get some nice color on them. If there is too much water, they will steam and not brown. So we want to make sure we get all that excess water out of there. And we can just give those some time to sit. And then our next step, we are going to cut our bread for our croutons. And whatever bread you have is fine. I like to use a nice hard crusty bread because they taste the best and they get nice and crunchy. But again, it's all about preference. So whatever you have. So we're gonna take our slices and feel free to use three slices and just cut them lengthways. And then you're going to want to make um, about four slices like so. So just cut them and then after you have your slices, we'll dice them. And again, they don't have to be perfect. Um, it's however you are able to get them into small pieces so that we are able to toss them and, and get them in the oven. I will say that you do wanna make sure that the slices or the dices are at least somewhat the same size so that they do cook even. But if they look a little off, it's okay. And our next step will be just to put those dices in a bowl. And we're going to go ahead and season our leeks and our croutons and get ready to put those in the oven. So get those leeks in a bowl if you haven't already. And I like to keep these pretty simple. Um, if you have an olive oil or vegetable oil, whatever oil you have on hand is fine. Um, and just some simple salt and pepper. Um, and I season to taste. So, I mean, if you don't prefer your items to be too salty, then just use your discretion. So I will go ahead and add, I can say about a teaspoon um, of salt to your croutons. And we will do the same with the black pepper. So go ahead and give it a few twists. The black pepper adds a nice bite to the salad, so be generous if you're able. And our next step will be adding oil. Um, I would say a tablespoon. You want them to be generously coated with oil so that we can ensure that they get a good amount of color and flavor and a nice crunch to them. And then go ahead and give those a toss. And as you're tossing them, you're looking for a nice gloss to be over your bread. So you don't want it completely saturated, but you do want to see the oil sitting on top of the bread. So it should be kind of shiny. And we can go on ahead and set that bowl aside. And we'll do the same with our leeks. So a bit of salt first. generous amount, a bit of fresh cracked black pepper, and 
And then again, just a nice even coating of your oil. And again, we don't want them completely saturated, but you want to see a nice gloss. I don't know if you guys can see those, but you want to see a nice gloss over your, your vegetables, your leaves. And these are ready to go on sheet pans now. So we're going to take our leeks and just lay them out evenly. You don't want them to be stacked on top of each other because they will steam. So just make sure that you spread them out evenly onto the tray to give them a chance to actually brown. You want that roasty, oniony flavor on there. And so it should look like this, a nice even layer. And we'll do the same with the croutons. Make sure we spread those out nice and even. Make sure every little piece of bread has its own space. Nothing's crowded on top of each other to ensure that we get that color that we're looking for. So they should look like this. Okay, and we're ready to go into the oven. Just set these sheet trays into the oven. And if you have a timer, I would start at about four minutes. And then we can continue adding time or, you know, we'll just, we'll just watch it closely. But setting a timer is important so we don't burn anything. So I'm going to go ahead and set my timer. Okay, perfect. So our next step will be our vinaigrette. So first things first, we will want to start by cutting our onions, I mean, I'm sorry, our lemons in half. And I suggest giving the lemons a nice roll to make it easier to get the juice extracted from them. So just give it a little bit of pressure. You'll see some of the lemon oils come out and that's good, you want that. So give your, uh, your lemons a nice, a nice roll. Go ahead and cut those in half lengthways and I will go ahead and cut each lemon. And now our next step is going to be squeezing the lemon juice. And feel free, I suggest just, you know, putting your hand under to catch any of the seeds, or you can fish the seeds out after. I prefer to get them out of the way first. And go ahead and just give those a nice squeeze. I enjoy using 
lemon with kale a lot. I feel like it complements it well. Um, lemon and kale are also like seasonal cousins. So, you know, they go well together. Um, also, kale can tend to be a tough uh, leafy green, as most people know. So using something that is acidic does help break down the fiber in the kale and make it a little bit more um, chewable, if you will. And if you do get any seeds in the bowl, feel free. We'll just go through at the end and fish those out. So don't even worry about it. Now I've squeezed most of my lemon, my lemon juice out of my lemons, and I'm going to go ahead and set these to the side. Give my hands a little rinse. I'm sure if you're following along, you already got a little achy. So, and we have our lemon juice here, so it's not too much, just enough. Um, our next step will be adding salt and pepper to our lemon juice. And that'll help make sure all the seasonings get in there. My timer just went off, so I'm gonna step away and check our oven. I believe that these can use a few more minutes. So let's go ahead and set our timers again for about three minutes. It doesn't hurt to keep setting your timer. Um, what hurts is when you burn things. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So feel free to set your timer as much as you need. So we'll go for another three minutes. Um, our next step will be adding salt and pepper. Um, I don't tend to measure but you wanna add your seasonings to your acid so that they can break down and actually evenly um, spread out and integrate into your, your liquid. Your vinegar, same thing. So let's say a tablespoon. And then we can always scale up or scale down from there. Our next will be black pepper. So go ahead and be generous. Black pepper is life. <laughs> so, and decent amount. Whatever you're comfortable with. Our next step after that is going to be adding our oil. Now, when making a vinaigrette, you want to make sure that you have. Um, more oil than acid as to get what we call an emulsification. So you want that acid to fold into that fat and create a nice velvety looking vinaigrette. So if you have a pour, that's fine. Um, you don't wanna just throw your oil in there. So grab your whisk and we have our bowl and we're just gonna slowly whisk our vinaigrette together. I have about a cup here. And what you'll notice is that your vinaigrette will start to get velvety. Um, it'll look like it's coming together. You won't see such a separation of oil and, and, and acid. And that's what you're looking for. And this looks good to me. Um, feel free to grab a spoon, if you will, and just give it a taste and see. It should look nice and 
and velvety. Give it a get a grab a spoon and then give it a taste and see see how you feel about it. If you'd like more salt, you can add a little more. I think that's good. It's nice and tangy. So our next step is gonna be smashing our garlic. And I have a garlic smasher. If you don't, that's okay. Again, we're gonna step away. I believe our timers are going off. And I think this looks good to me. So just find yourself a safe surface. And you can go ahead and set your sheet trays down and we will let these cool until we are ready to mix our salad. And always remember, unless you're going to cook something else, turn your oven off when you're done. So our next step will be um, crushing our garlic and adding a bit of the garlic to our lemon vinaigrette. So we'll see that smash those cloves. I like to use the heel of my knife and just to get that skin off of there. And then we'll use our garlic smasher to sort of mince it for us. If you don't have a garlic smasher, like I was saying earlier, um, feel free to use, you know, do it the regular way, <laughs> whatever is easier for you. Go ahead and press that garlic in there. Now, uh, if you don't like too much garlic, because garlic can be very potent, um, feel free to use your discretion. I prefer things very garlicky, so I am using two large cloves. If you have smaller cloves, you can use about four. Again, it's about preference. There is no right or wrong way. We'll get that nice garlicky flavor in there. And go ahead and give that a nice whisk. Now the lemon juice and the vinaigrette will break down the garlic and the garlic will, you know, evenly incorporate into the vinaigrette. So you won't have to worry about it being too sharp. Um, but again, we don't wanna use too much. Again, just give that a nice whisk. And again, feel free to save any of these scraps if you guys have any compost bins growing or anything like that. Um, okay. We can set that to the side. Now our next step will be chopping the parsley and the thyme. So I would say about a small amount, you could say maybe an ounce or so, um, maybe three or four sprigs. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and just chop those down and we can grab our three sprigs of thyme as well. And 
and I tend to wrap my parsley up before I chop it to ensure that I've got it all bunched together and just keep it nice and neat on the cutting board. So you'll start from the beginning and just go on ahead and give it a nice fine chop. And we're gonna chop it until it's pretty small. This is kind of what we're looking for. Just a nice, fine chop on that parsley. Parsley, we're going to toss the parsley into the vinaigrette. Give it a nice little whisk. That parsley will add some freshness and just some complexity to the vinaigrette. Now our next step after that, we will be taking our thyme and I just kind of thread my thyme. I just run my fingers across it and take the, take the little sprigs off. So we don't need to use the whole uh, twig. It tends to be a bit fibrous um, and we don't necessarily want that in the salad, so. Just go ahead and take that time off. Akila, I have a question on the time. Do you? Yes. It seems like time to me, uh, I mean, can you overdo it? I mean, it, it's stronger, right? So I just, I get nervous kind of with like rosemary and, and thyme and sage, but I, I get nervous with how much you use. Or, or right. You no, perfect. Um, so that's a good question. So. I always feel like with certain herbs, um, like herbaceous herbs, um, lavender and, and thyme, and um, like you said, sage and things of that nature, cilantro, less is more. So I always like to aim high with recipes just so we have enough, but sometimes you don't always use everything and it can just go back into you know, your refrigerator for another time that you need it. So I may be um, using or pulling the leaves off of two of the sprigs of thyme would be enough for you. I tend to like, and again, like I've said throughout this, preference is everything for me. So feel free to use as much or as little as you prefer. If you like thyme, go for it. If you, you know, tend to be a little bit more on the nervous side with thyme, then I would say, um, yeah, just pulling off the leaves off of around two sprigs should be enough. And we are gonna go, after we chop that, we will grab our leeks and we'll just toss this thyme onto the leeks. We could go ahead and set that aside. Uh, 
I don't know how many of you are making this at the same time, but I just got to say the, the, the aroma of everything is incredible right now. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the salad. Okay, that's it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Yummy and garden, gar gardeny, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just staying a bit of a step ahead, but um, our next step is going to be just pulling off our kale from the stem. And again, save this for compost. Um, so you can just start from the end, like so, and just pull it off and just set it on your cutting board. Now, some people do like kale stems. I, for one, am not particularly a fan because it is very fibrous and it is kind of hard to break down. So I tend to just omit them completely. Um, when I'm making, you know, a raw salad. If you're cooking them, you can use them. If you're going to stew them down or saute them, um, a little cook time on them makes them a little bit easier uh, to chew, more palatable. But I prefer just to not use them if I'm doing something raw like this with them. And I do have an entire bunch of kale. Um, if it's just for one person, you might want to use half. Um, if you're sharing with your family, which I intend to after this, then I will go on and, and use the entire, the entire bunch. And I will say that any kind of kale um, will be okay in a salad. If you are using um, like a curly kale, you will want to massage it. Um, and that's something that you can look up. It will help break down the, um, the fibers in the leaves of themselves. And so it makes it a little bit easier to chew. Um, you don't wanna have to fight with your food too much uh, when you're trying to eat it. So. We'll pull those off. And feel free as you're going through your kale, if you feel any grit on there, you can never be too safe. So go ahead and just give it another little wash and then pat it dry with some, um, some paper towel or if you have a free clean towel nearby just to get that excess moisture off of there. So I'm gonna go ahead and give mine a little rinse because I am feeling a bit more of a grit on there. Durable green. So feel free to get in there and, you know, give it a nice squeeze as you're washing it. Get all those sandy bits out of there. There's nothing worse than a, a sandy salad. So. Doing a quick little rinse on our radishes. 
All right. Um, so we can grab just a small handful of your kale. And this is gonna go into our mixing bowl. So we're gonna start building our finished product. So um, I just give it a few chops. It can be a rough chop. So just a couple of times across and then a few rough chops around. And just be mindful, use a small bit at a time. Don't overwhelm your cutting board. Um, Watch your fingers. And it'll look something like this. Nothing too, nothing too special. We're gonna do that for all of the kale. All of my kale is chopped up. And our next step is going to be shaving our radish. So with our radish, you're gonna to wanna to take the top off and take the bottom off as well. So this should be our finished product. And feel free to use as many or as little as you like. I'm going to use three because I have a few that are a different color. Should add some, some color or some vibrant colors to our, our dish. That's another awesome thing about Summertime vegetables, um, there's so many different pretty colors and flavors that you can use. Um, also while keeping it light and healthy. So feel free and, and don't be afraid to try, you know, new things. So after those are cut, We can take a quick second and just give ourselves a nice little cleanup before we build our salad. All right. So here I have a box grater, but we're just gonna use the slicer. If you have a mandolin or anything of that nature, that will work just fine, but you just want the sliced area right here. And uh, make sure you just tuck your fingers and just go ahead and throw a couple slices of your radish into your kale. And they'll just come out nice and thin like this. And that's what we're looking for. And I use about three radish. And this is what my, my salad is looking like right now. If you have to slice them, go ahead. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be shaved. I mean, if you want more of a crunch, you can cut them into quarters. Um, I pre pre prefer 
a shaved radish just because it, it makes for a nicer bite. And we'll just give that salad a nice toss. And our next step is going to be incorporating our leeks. And they should be cool by now, so we should have no problem with that. Akila, can you kind of point it down so we can see the bowl a bit more? Yes. Yeah, okay. We can't, yeah, there is better. Great. Yeah, so that's what we're looking for. Let me. I'll go ahead and do that so you'll see a little less of me and more bowl. <laughs> so we have our kale in here, our radish in here. We're gonna go ahead and incorporate our leeks in time. So go ahead and give that a nice little toss. And you don't have to use all of your leeks if you had a bigger stock of leeks. So let's just, let's say we'll add about a quarter. And then again, these are really good the next day. Um, I would say two to three days in your fridge. So you'll be okay using it again another night for another salad topping or whatever you wish. And I'm just gonna get in there. I have a little salad spoon and fork and we'll just give that a nice toss. And for those of you who are making it, like Jen had mentioned before, there's a nice oniony aroma and fresh, fresh aroma coming from the salad so far. And then our next step, we'll be adding our vinaigrette and giving our salad another toss. So feel free to give that a nice little mix. and use as much or as little dressing as you'd like. I like my salads to be considerably saturated, so I'll use a, a generous amount. And we'll go ahead and give it another toss. Now, before you put it in your finished bowl or whatever, um, just grab yourself another spoon and see if your lettuce is evenly coated. If not, feel free to add more salt and pepper, um, add more vinaigrette if you'd like. But for me personally, I think, <clears throat> I like to add a bit more leek and a bit more salt and pepper to mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. perfect. And our next step for me will be transferring into my serving bowl.
all those beautiful colors in there. And our final step, we'll be finishing with our croutons, which I will go grab. <laughs> and feel free to just sprinkle those on top. Now I wanted to keep this salad vegan, um, but if you'd like to, a nice hard cheese like um, Asiago or a Parmesan or even a feta would go really good with this salad. So if you have that at home, feel free to use it. And this is our finished product. Oh my gosh, so good. Wait, <laughs> I, I can't believe I, I did this. It's you did good. Good, yeah, it's so yummy. Everything about it, honestly. Yes. So this is my dinner. So. <laughs> um, I thank you. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I did want to. You're welcome. I've tried to answer a couple questions. Um, one is yes, we do. We will have the recording available on this Friday. And I did a link to the recording on a follow up email that you'll be receiving tomorrow. So you'll be able to follow okay. up and the recording will be up, I think indefinitely. So you can just refer to that. Um, and then I also did because um, I had a couple questions about when to get everything in the ground. And so on your reminder email that you received about an hour ago before the class, I did some links for resource handouts on um, edible landscaping, um, salad gardening with salad greens. I did a veggie planting calendar. So that's really a good resource because you can go, you can see when to get everything in the ground. So again, this has been really fun. I really appreciate everybody that joined. Akila, I appreciate your time and your expertise. And I really hope to have you back at another class down the line. Um, yes. I'd, I'd love to continue the Spotlight series um, because I really think it is so fun and it's nice to just have fun with the garden and see the different ways that we can you know, um, enjoy it. So thanks yes. everybody for your time and for joining us. And like I said, um, next week we will have the bee friendly garden, uh, bee friendly gardener coming in. She's got her own bee farm. She's like really amazing, cool. Talk about bees, talk about how to be bee friendly and to encourage um, native bees in your garden. So definitely join us for that. And then look at look on our website for the late you know the the most up to date list of our classes and registration and whatnot. So thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful Wednesday evening. Thank you. Uh, enjoy. I hope you I hope you have a nice salad for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for having me, Jen. And I look forward to doing a class with you again in the future. Absolutely. Same here. All right. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.